Hello everyone, Rubber Mold Man here with a quick little video that's going to discuss using metal reinforcing or rebar when casting concrete statuary. I've had quite a few people contact me about this and they're kind of confused so I thought this would be a helpful video. Uh, before I start I just wanted to mention that uh, I'm going to be kind of revamping this uh, YouTube channel for 2019. Uh, some of my original videos, while the basic info is still correct, uh, some of the contact info and places where uh, I used to sell some of my molds are all outdated, so I'm going to kind of revamp things here within the next couple weeks uh, with some of that uh, information, with all new uh, information, and it'll be down in the uh, detail information underneath this video, so like my contact info, website, and all that, that's where you will find it. That way, if anything ever changes, the video will still be valid and up to date, I just need to change the stuff in print under the video. Anyway, so rebar... Reinforcing for statues, what is it exactly? Well, it can be a number of things. Uh, a lot of times I used to buy large cattle panels. Uh, they're the big panels that you would use for gates and fencing uh, around uh, actually cattle, you know, if you had a ranch or something, uh, because those could be chopped down and they're galvanized, uh, good reinforcing, and I would use them in benches and everything that needed it. These days I found a bunch of old, uh, this is shelving, like closet shelving, that I can chop down, and uh, when I get it, it kind of, you know, it's metal, has these little ridges on it, which is fine, that just provides extra strength and durability, and then in the center of it, I get these little pieces. So I've actually been using that. In the past, for thinner pieces like this, I've used metal coat hangers, uh, different kinds of rebar. I do not like rebar that is all rusty. A lot of times, if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, they'll have sections with rebar, it's all rusty. That rust will eventually cause damage to your statue, so it's not good to do that. Whereas this stuff has kind of a coating on it. I, I've left it outside, I never see rust coming, so it seems to be okay. So, why do you need reinforcing in concrete? Well, in all honesty, most times you do not. Most statuary is plenty strong if you're making the concrete uh, the proper way. However, take a look at this piece here. Beautiful egret statue. I'll paint it up so it looks extra nice and pretty in that. Gorgeous piece, but if you'll see up here on the head, the neck gets pretty darn thin. It comes up off the body, gets pretty thin there. Now, fortunately, in the case of this egret design, it comes down and connects back to the body. That's uh, great because it actually provides extra strength that way. I have another egret where the head does not connect. It actually just sticks straight out. Um, in both cases, especially the other one, it has to have rebar in that neck to provide strength because obviously most people without thinking are going to come up and just grab it here and want to lift and that can cause cracking or even break it right off. So use rebar. In a case of a mold like that, while the mold is still apart, now here's the mold for it, you can open it up. I'm trying to do this one hand, but you can uh, get the basic shape of how you need to bend a piece of rebar, which is the case of this one, and you can kind of line it up here and uh, get it like that. And then you put it in the mold where it belongs. Again, doing it one-handed here, so it's a little difficult. But you just put it in up around the head there, where it goes. There you go. Close the mold up with the bolts. And then when casting it, fill it with cement up to about there. And then reach in, grab the rebar, and just shake it a little bit to make sure that the cement is getting around the end of the rebar there. You don't want rebar sticking out the top of your statue because remember, your mold is used upside down when you're actually casting. Uh, but that's pretty much it, then that's in there. The other kind of pieces, now if you look at this here, this is a sea turtle. The statue itself that comes out of here, nice and thick, but uh, the uh, legs or fins, whatever section of the turtle these are called, they're considerably thinner than the body of this. And uh, I've never had one break, but just to be safe, I take these thin ones here, and what I do is I actually bend them like this and I'll just now this one I'll go ahead and fill with cement almost all the way shake it like I do to get the air bubbles out and before I do the final um, addition of cement to you know kind of trowel it off from it I will take these and just press it down in the soft cement mixture about halfway down into the leg there and then let them be and I'll do that in all four finish uh, my mold work and those are in there and they just provide extra strength for those legs. So that's pretty much all there is. Sometimes you get animals like this guy here has a nice thick neck. Sometimes you get a thin neck. Uh, again, you can take something like this and maybe fold it over on itself and stick it down in there. 
Uh, but that's really all there is when it comes to rebar, just using some metal that helps provide extra strength in thin areas of statues. Again, most statues don't require it, but the ones that do, it's not much work, and it will definitely save you a lot of heartache and broken uh, pieces if you take the time to do that. So uh, keep a lookout on uh, my channel for new videos coming soon. Thanks again, and uh, email me if you have any questions. Good day.